Welcome everyone. I'm Kathleen Toomey and I really appreciate the fact that you are all here today. Um, this is the insider's guide. So if you're interested in hearing about um, CCRCs, this is the place to be. Um, so welcome and thank you so much for joining us. You can use the Q&A box at the top or the bottom of your screen to post where you're Zooming from. We always like to hear from people and understand where they're coming in from today. It's a gorgeous day and thank you for doing this. Um, so feel free to pop in and tell us where you are Zooming from. In the meantime, let's get going. Uh, as many of you are probably familiar, uh, this is a Zoom program. So you are muted for the period of time of our presentation. And then we will ask you to put questions in the Q&A as we start talking um, and as things start moving along. Um, and I am just going to, uh, I myself am having a little trouble moving my, moving my screen. So uh, give me a moment to see if I can, um, ah, there we go. So that's the Zoom housekeeping. We love questions. We'd like to use them on the Q&A screen and Zoom is a new world for us. So if you have any suggestions on how we can improve it, we are very happy to, to take any and all questions. Um, and if you have an idea for a topic, let us know that too. Um, as I said before, I am Kathleen Toomey. I'm Vice President of Marketing for the Riverwoods Group. And we have been around for over 26 years. Um, the Riverwoods Group is the largest family of nonprofit continuing care retirement communities in Northern New England. So we have three communities in Exeter. The first one was started in 1994. We have Birch Hill who became an affiliate in 2016. We opened Riverwoods Durham last year. And then we have a very, very fancy corporate term called SPE, which stands for someplace else. So we're always growing. We're always trying to provide this way of life to more folks. So we will be continuously moving. We really believe in this process and in this way of life for people. So to give you a little background on Birch Hill, we've been around for over a hundred years in Manchester. Um, so before you were born, uh, you might have been familiar with the words Pearl Manor or Hillcrest Terrace. They were predecessors of Birch Hill. Birch Hill became a CCRC in 2009. And we have a very unusual contract, a type B contract. Um, and since we've joined the Riverwoods Group, a lot of money has been put into Birch Hill's uh, physical plant and physical structure. <clears throat> because of that, because we have taken a lot of homes offline, we do have some immediate availability. So unlike other communities, we don't have a long wait list. And if you haven't seen Birch Hill, I suggest you come and check it out. It's incredible. It's 10 minutes from downtown Manchester, but on a beautiful wooded lot across from a 600 acre nature conservancy. So it is just gorgeous. Um, so what are we gonna talk about today? We're talking about why is aging different today than your parents or your grandparents' generation? And why today, does the CCRC concept make so much sense? We're gonna go through the three major contract types, what your options are. And then most importantly, we're gonna have time for you to hear from the true insiders, Nancy McGann, Carol and Jerry Buckley, and Ken Snow, who are all residents of Birch Hill. So let's get started. So, why are we even talking about aging today? And I'll tell you, it's all demographics. So this is the US census chart of 75 year olds. Right now, we have 10,000 people every single day in the US 
turning 70. Every day, 10,000 people turn 70. That's a lot of people. That's more older adults than this country has ever seen in its history. So there's more of you than ever before. The other thing that's different is that you're living longer. <coughs> so if you live to be 65, and this is just actuarial, you will live to 84. And if you get to 84, you're gonna live to 92. And if you live to 92, you can tack on a few more years. So that's different than any prior generation, than your father or your grandfather's generation. We are all living longer thanks to modern medicine. So that is a great thing. But what else is different about growing older today? This is something not a lot of people realize, but this is also very factually demographics. There are fewer people in the workforce for every retiree. So this inverted triangle so shows you how many people in the workforce for each retiree. How many people, 20 to 64 for every person over 65. In 1950, there were 7.2 people for every retiree. In 2011, it dropped to four people. In 2050, it's going to be two people. Now this is not two people in the super sexy, very attractive long-term care field. This is two people in total, the total workforce. So for those of you who have a plan of I'm staying home and I'm bringing in care when I need it, realize that it is going to be harder and more costly to bring people into your home than perhaps any prior generation. The other fact is thanks to good medical care, we are going to need some form of long-term care in our life. 70% of us are going to need long-term care. We don't know how long, but we have a few good guesses. So 20% of people today who are 65 years old are going to need long-term care for more than five years. And 7% of women will need nursing, nursing home care for more than five years. So nursing home care is the more expensive level of care. So that's to debunk people who say, I'm fine, I'm not going to need any care at all. These are statistics. Also, and this is a, a little bit depressing, is that as we get older, our chance of getting Alzheimer increases. So 32% of people over age 85 have Alzheimer's or another related disease, which is expensive and you can live a long time with Alzheimer's. With all those facts, you would think that people would be thinking ahead and understand what the costs are of nursing homes or assisted living. But in point of fact, according to an AP study, 58% of adults underestimate nursing home costs and 31% underestimate the cost of assisted living. So we know we need it, we just don't know what it costs. So here's the cost. So here in our state of New Hampshire is 125,925 for a nursing home private room. That's a median cost. It doesn't mean that it is where you want to go or near nearby. So it is cost it is costly to need long-term care and typically Medicare does not cover that. A lot of people want at home care, which is great. If this is your plan, a lot of at home care companies are starting wait lists. So it, it is important to understand if this is your plan, who do you want to go to? Who do you want your care to come from? And understand what their costs are. Today, costs range from 20 to $40 an hour and higher for non nursing care. So this is when you don't need nursing, you just need help with. Um, care for the activities of daily living. And it generally is private pay. So if this is your plan, what is your cost? So my, I advocate, if we know we are gonna live longer and there are more of us, and if we know that we're going to need care, it's important to understand where you're gonna get it, 
what it's going to cost, and who's going to provide it. Many people falsely assume that Medicare is going to cover long-term care, but in general, most Medicare stays are not Medicare eligible. You have to pay a three-night qualifying stay in a hospital to get your 100 days of Medicare. For those of you who have long-term care insurance, that is a great bridge. It provides fixed financial costs for a certain period of time. The only thing it doesn't answer is where your, your service is going to be provided. So we feel that CCRCs answer the question of what is the cost? What is the quality? Where are you going to get your care? And is something available for you? So just quickly going over the CCRC landscape, we don't have a lot of CCRCs in New England, um, but that's because we don't like to jump on a trend. So CCRCs have been around for a hundred years across the country. There are 1900 all over the United States. The majority of them are nonprofit, um, but, and they can be based, uh, faith-based, affinity-based, or like the Riverwoods Group, community-based, not-for-profit. But we have a very long and stable history. Um, and I'm going to go over generally what CCRCs are and generally what the contracts are. I really urge you to uh, write down your questions and the Q&A will go through that. So the one caveat about CCRCs is if you've seen one, you've seen one. <laughs> And if you've seen one contract, generally you've seen one. But I'm gonna go through in general, you come to a CCRC when you don't need care, when you're independent and you choose to move in so that you have a plan for the future. You have to be at least 62 and every CCRC generally provides several levels of living, independent, assisted and nursing care and some have also memory care. Once you're in a CCRC, you can transition between the three levels as your needs dictate. So you go back and forth. It is the freedom that you can get care when you need it. And as soon as you don't need it, you can go back to your independent home. You have services and amenities at every level. So in independent, you will uh, go through what you have, but in you'll get fewer services in independent than you will in assisted or nursing care. Generally, there are two fees, a one-time entrance fee and a monthly fee. And because we are nonprofit and because the government considers you're prepaying for your future medical expense, a portion of both of these fees can be tax deductible. In New Hampshire, all of our CCRCs are nonprofit, so there's always a benevolence clause which means if you don't outlive your assets, if you do outlive your assets through no fault of your own, you can apply to the community to carry you for the rest of your life. And importantly, you have more time to meet new friends and pursue new interests. So uh, these women look like they're having fun. This is our residents, um, Carrie and Nancy, uh, not worrying about a thing, uh, driving on campus. We are gonna be talking to Carrie later today. So essentially what most people don't understand is a CCRC is not a real estate transaction. We are an insurance product. You sign an agreement with us and we agree to provide your housing and nursing needs for the rest of your life, no matter what. The contracts in New Hampshire are regulated by the Department of Insurance. We report our financial um, numbers to the state annually and you can find them on our website and because we are prepaying or insurance for your potential assisted living or nursing needs then a portion of this is tax deductible but it's also a lifestyle choice it's a powerful choice to choose a ccrc you're moving in and you're coming in when you're independent and you get fewer home maintenance chores you have activities, programs, free fitness options, and much greater increase in social options because you can walk down the hall and connect with people. 
And the most important thing I think is that moving to a CCRC means you stay in control of your life. You know, if and when something happens, that you have a plan as to who is going to provide your care, where you're going to get that care, and what it's going to cost. You're not leaving that to chance. You're not leaving that for someone else, like one of your kids, to decide. So you have confidence facing the future. Typically, as an independent resident, you would get one meal a day, inside and outside maintenance, housekeeping, transportation if you need it, and access to great fitness classes, programs, committees, healthcare, and you don't have to worry about utilities or property taxes. We have a fantastic new wellness center that's staffed by a nurse practitioner, and you have access to the nurse practitioner. So if you have a raspy throat, like I do, or um, if you have a strange um, um, bump or a cut that you like her to look at, you can pop right down there. You don't have to make a doctor's appointment. It is so easy for you to stay healthy. And you get out and enjoy places like Doors Pond, which is nearby, and this is Len kayaking in Doors Pond. One way to think about a CCRC is to realize that there are multiple levels of care under one roof. And we care about making sure you get the care you need when you need it, and then you can achieve your highest level of independence. So on this slide, I'm going to talk a little bit about the three different types of CCRC contracts, because often people can get all excited about what the, their apartment looks like, or do they have a friend moving in, or um, they think the lobby is beautiful, but it's really important to understand the details of the contract. What are you getting? for what you are paying. So there are three types, A, B, and C. Type A is all-inclusive. This is the highest level of insurance. So this is for people who say, I don't wanna take any chances. I wanna get the absolute most insurance possible. Type C, on the other hand, has almost no insurance. There's no guarantee that if and when you need care, you have access to healthcare. This is where most of the for-profits are. And when you have healthcare, it is generally market rate. There's no discount on your, on your um, insurance. So this is going to be the least expensive with the least amount of insurance. And right in the middle is a type B, which has an entrance fee, it has a defined insurance. And what this means is you do not have to pay for care until you need it. So in a type A, you have one monthly service fee and it doesn't change when you go into healthcare because you're paying the higher rate. In a type B, you have a lower entrance fee and a lower monthly fee. When you need healthcare, you pay higher amount but that is discounted. So you are never paying market rate. So those are the three major contracts. Type B is a Bertel contract. And the other advantage to type B is if you have long-term care insurance, this is a great option for you because this is where your long-term care insurance will really pay off. When you go into healthcare, you can use your long-term care benefit to cover that. In addition to this, Birch Hill has a brand new contract that no one else in New England has. So this is called the 70% flexible contract. What does that mean? Well, in a number of CCRC contracts, they have a refundable entrance fee. What that means is generally when you move into the community, if you then pass away, or leave, you get a portion of your initial fee returned to you or your estate. So not all CCRC contracts have this, but a number of contracts do. Birchill is one of those. So we have a refundable entrance fee. But then we said, let's try to see if we can get better value out of this contract for the resident. 
So we have pioneered a contract where it's 70% flexible, which means your one-time entrance fee, 70% of that can be used during your lifetime when you are in healthcare. And this is fantastic because it means that when you are in healthcare, you can draw down on that entrance fee to offset your healthcare costs. So it's like having a little stash of money that you can use when you are needed in healthcare. We think this is a great value for folks. Um, we find that many folks, their kids are already doing well. So they are saying, "How? why can't I use this refundability? You can use this on top of your long-term care benefit. It's just another way to help you cover your costs for healthcare and provide access to money during your lifetime, as opposed to just asset preservation. What this means is you have predictable monthly service fees and you can plan for, the, for those healthcare costs that you need. It's been extremely popular. We sold out of the contracts last year and we have some additional contracts to sell this year. So if you're interested, let us know. Um, you never know what will happen when you move into a CCRC. And this is a picture of our first married couple, first, first couple that met at Birchville and got married. Um, so it's incredible what living in this community can open you up to understanding. One of the things that I've been doing is, is a lot of talking today and a lot of talking about numbers and, and contracts and finances. But I, I fell in love with this concept because I believe it's the best way to grow older. And the reason is because you have more social connection in life. And even for introverts, that is really important. But don't take my word for it. Harvard University did the world's lar largest longitudinal study. They took a cohort of men um, and followed them for over 80 years. And they released results of the study and it boiled down to one sentence. They followed these guys from graduating to when they were 80 years old. And to, they were trying to figure out how can you have a happy and healthy life, a long, happy and healthy life. Is it education? Is it diet? Is it exercise? Is it marital status, financial success, um, children, spiritual. And what they found was this. Good relationships keep us happier and healthier, period. That is the key. Being connected, being socially engaged, being able to talk to other people and interact with people helps us live a happier and longer life, which is incredible. So you can do that here. You will meet people you have never met before and you will do silly things, go kayaking, go to a hot dog house, um, all different kinds of things you never imagined, maybe not get married, but who knows, you know? So, if this is interesting to you and you'd like to pursue this, there's only two things you need to do to understand if you would qualify. One is a healthcare assessment. We do our healthcare assessments right in our community, done by our nurse practitioner who's a doll. And what we do is we ask you to fill out a couple pages of forms, tell us what your current uh, condition is and medical history. And then we do a quick medical and cognitive assessment. So it's strength and balance, and just making sure that you don't have any significant cognitive issues. The second piece is a financial assessment. So we take your, you provide us your assets, your income, and we project your spending over a lifetime. And then we help qualify you for the apartment or home that you choose because one thing I did forget to say is that in a CCRC, the price difference is really just based on size. So if you want the largest apartment, that's going to be the most costly. If you're happier with a smaller apartment, it's less costly. 
So generally, those are the only two things you need to do. And then you just need to make the decision to move and your life will get easier. We have handled COVID in a really elegant way because we are part of a family. So as we all know, this unprecedented pandemic has hit primarily older adults. And we've learned a lot and we are looking forward to and actually planning on getting our vaccines and being able to administer the vaccines to our residents. Um, but if you are in a CCRC, you are better equipped with a professional nursing staff, a professional housekeeping staff. We have access to PPE, sanitizing wipes, testing. We are extremely aggressive about safety. So you have the access to community, but you also have the knowledge that this is the safest place you can be. We are very, very diligent about that. So I think CCRCs make a lot of sense now because of a number of changes. We have better medical, we have better medical care, but it is going to cost more and you're going to live longer, which means you have a higher lifetime medical and long-term care costs. Typically in past generations, that will be solved by the family. But right now we've got a sandwich generation. We've got dual career couples and they're far flung. They're not necessarily living in your hometown. Um, and the mom isn't necessarily staying home. She's having her own career, managing her own kids. So the children are too far flung and busier than in prior generations to be that on hand person who can help out. Also, you don't want that. This is a very active, very youthful generation of retirees for traveling, well, they used to be traveling, running, doing all kinds of things. You don't want to sit and wait in your rocking chair for someone to call you. You wanna be in control of your own destiny. So the way I think about it, and you're gonna be hearing from the true experts in a few minutes, you have five options. One, you can be an immortal teenager. I'm gonna stay home and nothing is gonna to happen to me until one day I wake up dead. How many people have that as a plan? That is actually not a plan. And generally it may not happen to you. The second option, very close to related is I'm gonna stay home and I'm gonna bring in services. Now this is very popular for New Englanders who equate independence as being in their own home. So I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna stay home and bring in a housekeeper and a plumber and a roofer and a plow guy and a lawn guy. And when I need help, I'm going to get at home care. If that's your plan, remember this inverted triangle that I talked about earlier. It is going to be harder to get care to come into your home because of demographics. Your third option is cohabitation. If those of you who are interested in moving in with your kids, if that's your plan, tell them, have a conversation with them and make sure they are ready for that. Your fourth option is moving directly into assisted living or nursing home when it's a crisis. So number four is directly connected to one, two, or three. If there comes a time when you need more care than you are able to provide on your own, you may be forced to make a decision in a crisis. It doesn't necessarily, as we all know, when we're making a decision in a crisis, it's not the best option in terms of, of choices. You have fewer choices. And the last option is a CCRC, which is, for someone who wants to make a plan, who wants to make their decisions, stay in control of their life, and who wants to enjoy life and have more opportunity to do new things. And that is a perfect segue for our speakers, Nancy McGann, Carol and Jerry Buckley, and Ken Snow, to tell you what it's really like living in a CCRC and why they chose doing this. So I'm going to put myself on mute and who do we have starting first? Nancy, do you want to kick us off? I'll be happy to. And please, folks, when they're talking, uh, don't hesitate to write questions and answers on the. 
I, I lost Kathleen. She just got muted. So I'm Nancy McGann, and I've lived at Birchill for three and a half years. I was born in Chicago. I grew up in the suburbs and graduated from Monmouth College in Illinois with an art and education degree. I ultimately ended up in Connecticut for 35 years and worked at Sikorsky Aircraft, home of the Black Hawk helicopter, where I was a technical illustrator and proposal production manager. After retirement, I downsized to Windham, New Hampshire, and there became a docent at the Courier Art Museum, which is here in Manchester. I've given tours of the Frank Lloyd Wright Design Zimmerman House. Life at Birch Hill certainly has not been what it was prior to COVID. But for me, it hasn't been hard, and at times it's actually a pleasure. The staff did everything possible to keep us safe, and if that meant restricting our movements, that was just fine with me. Everything we needed was delivered to our apartments <clears throat> and with Amazon and all the delivery services, no one was in need of anything. A country store was set up in the activity room where we could buy almost everything with the exception of food. Birch Hill residents experienced no shortages of paper towels, Kleenex, and the big one, toilet paper. The country store grocery store sold limited grocery items to supplement the meals that were delivered to your apartment every day, once a day. When I say it was a pleasure, <clears throat> it's because I don't have any trouble being alone and entertaining myself. I've welcomed the slower pace and the ability to decline whatever I didn't feel like doing with a simple excuse. When this all began, I made a list of everything I could do in isolation. As an artist, I could draw and paint. I do needlework, I read, I enjoy jigsaw puzzles, and, and I caught up with longtime friends all over the country and a couple who live outside of the United States. Have I done any of the obvious things like cleaning my closets or drawers? Of course not, nor have I completed the 1000 piece jigsaw puzzle that I began. Just thinking about these things and all the other uncompleted projects make me wonder what have I done to fill my time? Perhaps it was because I discovered all the wonderful shows on Netflix, Prime and PBS. Probably that has a lot to do with it. My apartment has a patio. So when the weather improved, I was able to step out onto the road and walk for exercise. This year, more than ever, I've enjoyed patio gardening, but had to do without some of the, some of the nursery items I would have liked. The pandemic has brought out some of the worst in people, so I've been told, but not at Birch Hill. Neighbors reached out to help each other. One neighbor gave me cuttings from her coleus plants for my patio garden, and others shared things like flour and yeast when supplies were in short. One day I looked around and I noticed all the new residents who have moved here since January, all unknown to each other and the rest of the residents because we're behind masks. So I decided to do a publication to introduce our neighbors. I recruited writers who interviewed all the new residents by phone, and I roamed around with my iPhone and took their pictures without, quickly without their masks. It was a fun diversion for all of these, those of us who had plenty of time on our hands. And with my experience doing proposal production at Sikorsky and newsletters for the Guild of Volunteers at The Courier and here at Birch Hill, we distributed a beautiful 20 page document that was enjoyed and appreciated by all. The restrictions that began in March were very strict. However, as the numbers in Manchester and New Hampshire improved, they were gradually lessened. We've gone from lockdown at the beginning to today when we can now leave the campus. We have the same restrictions as every other citizen 
but are expected to exercise extra caution. Inside visits with families are still not allowed, but weather permitting, uh, visits with family and friends can be had on, on outside. Uh, I forgot where I, where I was, sorry. But, oh, I, I know, COVID has made life very difficult for people in different ways. I would guess, <clears throat> I would guess that the female consensus is the inability to get to a hairdresser. I miss my volunteer work at the Courier where I've given tours for 10 years, but the museum recently bought, uh, rather acquired another Frank Lloyd Wright designed house. So I've been kept busy with Zoom museum trainings, uh, book discussions about art and going to art talks put on by the cur curators at the museum. No time at all. I found myself very busy again. I had to cancel the Viking tour, unfortunately, and things I enjoy such as art museums, theater, symphony, have all been put on hold or canceled. I worry about future travel, even if it's only to Chicago where my son and his family live. But those complaints are insignificant compared to getting critically ill and only when I have all my projects completed, will I just maybe have a complaint about isolation. We're safe and well at Birch Hill and that is what's important. That is wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Nancy. That was, that was just terrific. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate your views uh, during the whole time of COVID too. Um, Carol and Jerry, are you uh, ready to share your thoughts? And we are. We're here. Okay, great. Yeah. Take it away. Thanks, Kathleen. Carol and I both uh, are, or at least were, uh, Connecticut Yankees. We grew up just a few miles apart, but our paths never crossed until we met at Cornell University. Uh, actually, we did a lot more than meet at Cornell University. We were married students there for the last one and a half years. After graduation, we returned to Connecticut, where I started what was to become a 35-year career as an engineer, working on uh, an assortment of military, scientific, and commercial optical systems. I finished up my four years at Cornell with a graduate in home economics and then immediately turned around and put it to work as a married student, mother, and soon, or a wife and soon to be a mother. We had three children and they eventually evolved into seven grandchildren. Uh, <clears throat> during this time when we were living in Connecticut, we had many opportunities to travel to New Hampshire and became quite intrigued with um, living in that area. So when Jerry retired, um, he, we followed through with that idea. In 1996, after 35 years uh, in my engineering career, that career that had been challenging and rewarding somehow was no longer as much fun. Connecticut was getting too built up and life was getting too hectic and New Hampshire was calling. So we, I retired early and we started planning uh, a move to New Hampshire. In 1997, we accomplished that move, came to New Hampshire and built our log home dream house on a lot that also had a pre-existing lakeside camp. 25, 23 years later, the combination of that log home and, and that lakeside camp have become a much loved family compound. It's a magnet for kids, grandkids, and other friends and, and, and family. Uh, we hope that our facility stays in the family indefinitely. However, we were faced with a dilemma. Our hearts were saying, we want to stay exactly where we are forever, continuing life exactly as we have come to love it so much. On the other hand, our heads were saying that might not be feasible. Sooner or later, one or both of us may find uh, we're unable to keep up with our current lifestyle uh, and or have a health crisis or other 
support requirements. Well, uh, yes. Oh, uh, uh, go ahead. We didn't want to have to be phased. We did, yeah, we're, we're very uncomfortable with the prospect of having to make emergency lifestyle changes or medical decisions under crisis conditions. And we were very fortunate in that respect because as I mentioned before, we had friends and family in New Hampshire. And my parents had reached the ripe old age, young age of their 80s, their mid 80s, and were having a hard time navigating on their own. So I set about with them to look at what the possibilities were. And I think all the things that Kathleen has just said became kind of obvious to us and to what their choices were. Somebody said, you ought to look at this new place in Exeter called Riverwoods. It offers everything you want and you don't have to leave the campus to get the services you need. So off we went to Riverwoods, signed on the dotted line, and my parents moved in to spend the rest of their lives there. That not only introduced them to a good way of life, it also introduced us to a good way of life and became something that said to us, maybe we better consider this also. The only regret I had in my parents' situation was that they weren't there, they didn't decide early enough so that they could enjoy a lot of the programs and things that they ended up enjoying while they were there, but they also ran very quickly into health um, situ situations which were they they couldn't they couldn't enjoy what they might have enjoyed if they'd worked moved in a few years earlier. So Jerry and I said to each other, we should keep in touch with Riverwoods. And we became on that we came up, we we signed up for their list. We actually signed up for a waiting list. And we thought, but you know, before we make a final decision and we have time, we should look around. So we looked at all the CCRCs in the area, or at least we thought we did. All of a sudden we realized when we got a notice in the mail that Riverwoods was forming an affiliation with Birch Hill that maybe we should look at Birch Hill. So we went to the first meeting of that affiliation sponsored by the Riverwoods group and we're very, we were very intrigued. And the reason we felt it was right for us was number one, it was a type B which is fit right exactly into our plan. Number two, all of a sudden, all those car trips that we were making from Webster, New Hampshire, 45 minutes to the doctors, 45 minutes to eat out, 45 minutes to the theater <laughs> became much nicer when we moved to Birch Hill. Those same facilities and even more were opened up to us. They were only four or five minutes away. And we didn't have to drive. If we wanted to go with a group, we could. So we decided that this was really going to be a good thing. We signed on the dotted line. And oh, the other thing we really liked about it was the rural atmosphere. We're coming, we were living in a rural atmosphere. We kind of wanted to maintain that advantage of being able to go and walk outside. We have animals, we have a dog, and to be able to go out and walk in a beautiful area every day with our dog was, was very desirable for us. So anyways, the vibrations were very good. We liked the looks of the facility. It had a very welcoming look, not an institutional look. And there we were, Jerry and I looked at each other. All yours, dear. <laughs> I have to admit, it was a very tough decision for me, uh, for me especially. I regard myself as a bit of a country boy, uh, except when I was away at school, I had always lived in a private home in a relatively rural setting. The prospect of living in an apartment surrounded by a bunch of old people did not have a lot of appeal. Those feelings, however, were offset by realization that having a plan in place for whatever care we needed, it, whatever care we needed, whatever we needed it, uh, would have uh, huge uh, peace of mind benefits. We had a bit of a push in the form of a uh, early decision incentive uh, at Birch Hill 
uh, is it enough to, to, to commit us to sign on the dotted line uh, and we moved into our customized apartment in May of 2017. Virtual has turned out to be a whole lot more than a peace of mind investment. We were amazed at how quickly we fit in and became part of the community, even though we continue to spend some of the time back at our Webster place. We made many new friends. We found that every time we went to dining, we, we met people that were fascinating, had interesting backgrounds. And as Jerry often said, there wasn't a person that we met that wasn't interesting. Anyways, we came back and back and forth. Every time we return to Birch Hill, we think of it as our home. And we look forward to spending, again, more time there, continuing on with our friends and meeting the new ones that are moving in. Everybody has been so friendly both the residents and the staff alike. We've been particularly interested in the fact that they um, <clears throat> upgraded their uh, physical, uh, not their therapy, what's the word I want? Fitness. fitness their fitness program. Um, Bernadette has been just wonderful. She has, not, has programs going both in daily fitness all aspects of it, but she was a big help during my knee replacement surgery and getting me back on the road after getting instructions from the physical therapist that came through the doctor. So we just think that CCR Living is a, a, a wonderful opportunity to increase the quality of your life in your later years, in spite of all the obstacles you may run into. We, we feel we've done the right thing when we chose the Birch Hill community. Thanks. Thank you so much, Carol and Jerry. That's a great, great story. And now we are going to hand it to Ken Snow. Ken, uh, if you wanna share your thoughts on being a resident here. Hi, how are you? I'm so glad you, all you people are interested in looking at other options and knowing by coming today, you've made the right choice about where to go. This is the best decision I ever made. Um, both my wife and I live very comfortably here at Birch Hill. In fact, my daughter describes our apartment as a high-end condo. I don't know why she does that, but it is a very comfortable place and has become our home. We, we grew, Monty grew up, my wife Monty grew up here in New Hampshire. I came from Massachusetts. And I'll be a carpetbagger for the rest of my life, no matter how long I spend here. But we have been in New Hampshire for over 50 years. Uh, I had a 50-year career working in the community mental health field and retired in 1974. And my wife was a, a, a teacher at several locations here in Manchester, started several uh, preschool programs and became involved in preschool education for teachers. And... Uh, we raised two children have both attended public schools here in Manchester and both still live in New Hampshire, one here in Manchester. Frankly, they, my son bought our old house here in town when we moved out and my daughter who lives nearby up in uh, the lakes region. Uh, <clears throat> we started thinking about making a move in 1974 when I retired and we looked around at various places but I was familiar with Birch Hill because a close friend of mine that I'm still in contact with all the time was when he was president of Easter Seal was the one that developed Birch Hill, which originally was known as Hillcrest Terrace. Uh, and I was involved with him and getting things started and so forth. And I was always very interested in Birch Hill. He used to have me, me and other friends up here to put Christmas decorations up the first few years and so forth. And I was always sort of intrigued with the idea and I've known several people who lived here and never heard a bad report about how it was going on. So after we looked at all those places, we decided this is where we wanted to go. And we went over and met with the marketing people and so forth. And then at the end of the first day, you know, I was still a little ambivalent. Am I ready to do this right now? Do I need to move in right now? And my wife and I left, Monty and I left and went out in the parking lot. And we looked at each other and said, you know, we want to move here, but not yet. We're not quite ready. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, if you wait until you're really ready, it may already be too late. You need to make the decision earlier on when you can really 
adjust to the new lifestyle and move right along. A year after we made that decision, uh, both of us, we, you know, we both had some health problems, which led me to believe we wanted to do that. Uh, mostly it's in the area of mobility, uh, but we had a couple of serious health problems at the time and we decided we had to move right ahead. My daughter, who is one of those take charge type, type of people, uh, said, uh, met with our marketing people and found out that everything we'd already done was in place and we could move in whenever we wanted. We went over, uh, picked out an apartment and uh, they helped us hire a firm to pack everything up because we really couldn't do a lot of the work in our old house ourselves. And um, they arranged everything and we moved in very comfortably. I remember the day we moved in, the company that we hired to handle the move and the moving told us not to come to the apartment until they called us. We showed up at this apartment and walked in and the bed was made, the food and dishes were all put away, the furniture was all arranged as the sketch that we had left for the company do. And we moved in and the only problem we had was occasionally we couldn't figure out where the uh, moving people left the can opener, for example. But ultimately it was an extremely good decision and a very easy move. A couple of factors that really influenced me. I spent a lot of time in Manchester. I was involved in a whole variety of, of uh, boards, advisory boards and so forth. I was a career long social worker uh, and in the community mental health field. And, uh, you know, I just knew that I could stay involved with a lot of those things. And when I retired also, not wanting to spend my days watching Dr. Phil on TV, I decided to run for the state legislature and fortunately was elected. Uh, and I'm now just was elected to my fourth term in the state legislature. Yeah. My wife decided to take a more casual appeal to life, but she busies herself with lots of things. And we're both just extremely content with the decision we made to move here. Um, you know, one of the things that tipped me is, is I got a little bit older. And when I retired, I realized that one of the main things I was going to do is, you know, work around the house, do all those things I always wanted to do. And then I start to think about that. Do I really want to continue mowing lawns, shoveling snow, doing touch-up painting, repairing this and repairing that? Or would I rather move to a place where all that stuff is kind of taken care of for us and we can spend our time doing something that truly is fun? And that's among the reasons why we felt this move to Birch Hill was such a good decision for us. Uh, I'm extremely content uh, uh, living here. Uh, I did have to resign from the House of Representatives when I sold my house and moved here. But I ran from this new ward. And thanks in part to all the help I got in the other residents here, I was elected by a significant majority from a new ward where I really wasn't that well known. And everybody here at Birch Hill pulled together to help me do it, uh, to, to accomplish that. And I was deeply appreciative of, of the, all their help. Um, I think there's two things about this. Moving to Birch Hill, where I came from Manchester, allowed me to continue with a lot of the other community activities that I've been involved with for a long time, which is great. But if you come from the Midwest or the far West or wherever else, you have a bunch of people in here that will help you get involved in the community and doing things that you like to do and can kind of steer you all in the right direction. Because we've got a very good mix of people. Some move in from a distance away. Others of us have gotten well established here and look forward to the opportunity to help people get involved in things they're interested in. Uh, as I said, when I first opened up, moving to Birch Hill was probably one of the best decisions I ever made. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ken. That was just fantastic. Um, I really appreciate everyone being so um, open about their process and and what it took to get here. And now we're at my favorite part, which is the question part. Um, so please type in the Q&A section, whatever questions you have for myself or for the Birchill residents, as you can tell, a lot of different backgrounds, a lot of different reasons for coming, but they all seem extremely happy to be here and um, and have made the choice and are, I would say, pleased with the results. Um, I see two questions so far. Um, and one is, please discuss the differences between Birch Hill, Riverwoods, and the Durham communities 
other than the contracts? So um, that's a really good question. And since I'll take that question since I work at all three uh, communities, I think that what they have in common is more similar than what they have as um, differences. What they have in common is all of the three communities have really smart, really intellectually curious and involved residents. As you can see from Ken's uh, discussion, he decided to run uh, for the legislature from a brand new uh, community and won. Um, Nancy McGann is an active volunteer. The Buckleys are active. The people that choose a CCRC are generally extremely engaged, smart and interesting people that want more out of life. So that's what's, what's similar. Um, what also is similar is the staff that work at each of the communities all wanna be there because they feel like they're making a difference in someone's lives. They could probably make more money elsewhere. Um, they could probably have more lucrative careers, but they're there because they wanna connect and make a difference to people. So you have a group of staff members who are very caring, who really try to help you figure out what that thing is that you need. Um, even during COVID, they, they strive to make a difference. From a personality standpoint, I would say each campus has their own different personality. And within Riverwoods and the three different campuses, there are different personalities in each different campus. So you have to kind of come and get a sense for yourself. Um, the other thing I would say is what unites them is they all are very um, in, as, as Ken said, they're in rural settings. They've got Everyone has um, walking trails, raised garden beds. Uh, no one has the amount of space that um, Birch Hill has with a 600 acre nature conservancy across the street. So that is pretty significant. Um, so if that didn't answer your question, pop in another question. And um, we are, what are we at? Um, I think just a little after 11, I'm gonna stay till 11.15 to answer the questions uh, for anyone that has them. The second question is that um, you mentioned nursing home and uh, nursing care and home care aid is discounted from market rates and show what the market rates are. So can you say how much the care is discounted at Birch Hill during the type B contract? So, um, when you come to Birch Hill, um, you are paying a lower monthly service fee than you would at a type A, like a Riverwoods Exeter or Durham are both type A. You're paying less. When you go into healthcare, you're going to pay slightly more. It's based on the care that you need. So it's hard to say because um, assisted living is at one level, memory care is at another level and nursing care is at, a, at another level but it is significantly discounted. I would say more than 20% off the, from the very beginning, from what you would pay from a market rate. Um, but it also depends on what level of care you're in. They're all discounted. The other advantage that um, Birch Hill has is in their contract, you have 30 free days of nursing care for every day that you're an independent. So if you are an independent resident and you need some care, you have, uh, as Carol said, a knee problem, you have 30 free days every day that you are in independent that you can access healthcare without paying for care. So it's a great product. It's a great experience. And the advantage is you are working with folks who understand who you are, where you came from and what your interests are. Um, other, uh, I have one other question. Um, so we have, a, just to, to clarify that too, it's either, a, it's significantly discounted. Um, we have one other question 
which is um, which is what homes are available. And at Birch Hill, we have a few homes that are available right now. Um, we also are renovating them with brand new appliances, granite countertops, open floor plans. So it's very uh, significant, the, the difference. If you have not been to Birch Hill, you definitely need to be there um, just to, to check it out. So those I think are the questions that I have um, for today. Um, I'm gonna uh, leave on this screen. Um, if you have not yet been to Birch Hill, please, please uh, check us out. We can do tours safely monitored right now. So feel free to give Carmen a call or send her an email to make sure you schedule an appointment to meet some folks and get to see what the community is like. Um, I don't have any more questions. So any parting words from Nancy, Jerry, Carol, or Ken to sign stay, off? Stay well. Okay. Yeah. yeah you. You won't be sorry if you take a look and make the decision. I'm telling you, one of the things that's so nice is that I know this almost sounds trite, but the residents are so friendly and welcoming when you first walk in. It's a little scary to walk into a place with a whole bunch of people that you haven't met yet, and they were all walking around wearing masks, and it almost looks as if you've uh, inadvertently walked into a, uh, uh, a bank robbery. But in fact, the people go out of their way to make sure you, you, they put a sign up on the front desk that says you're a new resident. And in fact, a lot of times, some of us just call new residents as they come in and say, just uh, no, you haven't met me yet, but welcome. This is a great place and uh, we hope you enjoy it. Please feel free to call me if you have any questions. But you will notice just exactly how friendly everybody else is when they're here. As an example of that, I find it very difficult to walk past anybody in the hall, resident or staff, without exchanging friendly greetings. Yes. I think that's a good measure of the, the atmosphere that prevails. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, thank you all and thank you all for participating. Please make a plan to come see us and um, I appreciate your interest in Burtel. Thank you for Zooming with us today. <laughs>